Hi, I'm Andy Blanchard from East Liverpool, Ohio, and we're here at the James River State Park Rooftop Tent Rally for 2020. I'm gonna take you around my 1977 International Scout Traveler. Travelers are a Scout II with 18 inches longer wheelbase from the door to the rear axle. I started this vehicle with a prepper-ish mindset and just wanted something old. I actually started looking for an old Bronco to restore and those are few and far between in the Rust Belt uh, or within my price range. So I got this from close to Fort Wayne, Indiana where they were manufactured. It's a fiberglass tub, doors. The front end is not original Scout. It's from an International S Series, which is the light duty single axle dump trucks. We got still sprung under everywhere. The Scouts came equipped with Dana 44s. This is a spring under four inch lift with a little bit taller shackles. So it equates to about a five inch total lift running 33, 1250s. I put 4340 chrome molly axle shafts in, heavier spindles, uh, 427 gears with air lockers front and rear, breather extensions, extended brake lines. It's not the flexiest truck off road, but it does flex pretty good and has a decent amount of travel for what it is, but really heavy duty axles for this weight of a vehicle. So it's basically what Rubicons try to do now, Scout was doing in the 60s and 70s. So on the front end here, coming down the side, we've got Warren Premium Lockouts. Uh, Scout did come with a auto lockout, but they're uh, problematic and this is a little tougher. You do have to get out of the truck, but it makes the decision easy. Uh, we've got two by six rock rails here, both sides full length. Um, they're just two by six box channel. I did weld them up 100% and they're auxiliary air tanks for the vehicle. Both sides are plumbed together as well as a Vi air, air tank underneath. And then someday I'll get a external cage built on her for a rooftop rack. Uh, some ditch lights, nothing fancy, just Amazon boys and got a ham radio system as part of my comms. The worst mirrors in existence. These are going to be changed to something better someday. Uh, topper is a soft topper actually made for the Scout Traveler, which was very surprising to me. Uh, again, there weren't as many of these made, so that made a pretty easy decision on going with them. It's been really great. It's a good top. Rattles a little in the wind, but she don't go that fast anyway. <laughs> Moving back, just simple uh, stainless exhaust all the way back. Way too big of a muffler. That's on my list of things to tuck. Coming around the back end here, uh, build a tire carrier just to free up space in the bed. A CB antenna. Uh, high lift jack, mount for my chainsaw, plans to put fuel on it someday maybe. Uh, this is actually a receiver mount that I put on here so if I ever wanted to carry a cooler rack, just pull the pin and decide to put your license plate somewhere else. Tilt and roll hitch, which I really have liked since I started this trailer build. We've also got a pigtail to the trailer on welding leads, nice heavy duty cable. I've got an air chuck there that comes off of the air system and my seven pin for my trailer and brakes. So this is the kit I carry in the rear end for all the eventualities. Fully stocked recovery kit from Blue Ridge. Fluid bag, and then tool wise, we've got the full tool folder and the roller and a wrench kit all from Blue Ridge again. And uh, you hope you never have to dip into those, but you have bad days. There's a propane tank back there. Liquid propane tank, forklift duty tank, basically. This is a 6.2 diesel with a Banks aftermarket turbo. Um, I do have a liquid propane evaporator solenoid here goes into the intake and it's not a night and day thing it does it's not like nitrous in a gas engine it just helps the diesel burn efficiently and get all the available power out of that burn just maximizing a arguably underpowered vehicle uh, not much upgraded on the engine but kind of frankenstein a few things together this is a true one wire diesel no egr um, military Humvee intake to get rid of the EGR and the need for any electronics. I run an ECT recycler. Optima 31 series here. 
under the uh, body back on the frame is the exact same battery mounted above the frame for a dual battery setup. Nice big three core radiator, electric cooling fan, just so I don't have to worry about a detluching fan or anything. Okay, so in the front seat here, we've got the Blue Ridge mall panels on the sun visors for passenger slash wife and I. That bag I really like, but my wife has taken it over. So no maps and lip balm and all her doodads right in there. Oddly enough, the pouch made me build the grab handle. So this isn't stock to scouts. My buddy LT Wright uh, has one that his wife uses in the Jeep. So I liked his bag enough that it got me thinking about it. And then I built the grab handle to save the windshield frame. And so I would have somewhere to hang that bag. Blue Ridge items here on the back of the seat. Velcro headrest holder with some gadgety bags, little Velcro pockets. This is mainly just rain gear behind me. The small first aid kit, same thing. Want it quick and accessible. Um, S-Pod style macro switches, an eight series switch relayed under the hood. Comms, we've got a IC2730A ham. Uh, other side of comms down here, we've got a CB, nice old Cobra 29 LTD Classic. They're huge, but they're very good radios for CBs. I'm big on feedback because I never trust repairs. So I've got a boost gauge, EGT for the motor and turbo, a uh, billet aluminum dash insert that I made to get back to all of the gauges. So I've got oil, water, and transmission temp. Navigation wise, I use a Android tablet with Gaia on it. No cell service, I don't pay for cell on that. So I pair it with a Garmin Low GPS receiver. They Bluetooth together and gives it a really good reading. Uh, then we have just a put together backup camera system for myself. I've got an approach camera up front and a backup camera in the rear. And I run that through a multiplexer so I can choose which camera view I'm getting at any one time. Red Arc brake controller for the trailer. That's a nice little upgrade because you can switch into manual mode with it if you're descending a hill, actually activate your brake trailers and have it hold you, hold you back. And the gauge over here for the onboard air and the switch to control that. Let me take you around my M416 military trailer that I've modded out for overland camping and travel. We have a scepter can, water storage, and we've got a 12 volt pump. Linear actuators on all four corners. So the rooftop tent frame rack up here will articulate 18 inches. Uh, eight gauge circuits run into the back on these Anderson connectors on both sides. This one I pigtail into the distribution panel and that runs the lights on the awning here, as well as giving people places to charge cell phones and whatnot. And the Anderson plug on this side runs a diesel heater that I built into a Pelican case. So that just goes up through a Mylar vent to heat the, the annex in the tent. The tongue box here is uh, just a Harbor Freight tongue box, but modded it up turned it into or kind of evolved into my electrical box so i've got a battleborn 100 amp hour lithium ion battery these are the relays that control the linear actuators and the switches that control the relays got a fuse panel in here my battery charger if i have shore power available solar wires and whatnot extra and then the vehicle charges through this red arc bc dc 1225 as well as being a solar controller to charge the battery so i hope you've liked this tour around the 1977 international traveler and m16 military trailer for overlanding the traveler has been a 10-year ongoing project for me that once i caught the overland bug turned the volume up to 1000 <laughs> no, I did a lot of things in the last year, both to it and the trailer. Been a great time getting out here, meeting these Overland guys. Uh, I am Talgayita, T-A-L-G-A-Y-E-E-T-A -E -E on Instagram. I don't post a lot, but if you want to check it out or friend me, uh, see you out there on the trail.